So Whatever. you all you need to have reasonable articulable yeah. suspicion before this point, not not like we're gonna find the reasonable articulable suspicion later. Uh, <laughs> That's not how it works. Up to the last two sentences, we were doing fine. <laughs> up to the last two sentences, we were doing fine. The, the police <laughs> wanted to go and ask him some questions, ask his name, where do you live. This is fine. Then we said, this is obstruction and I'm detaining you. This is where we went yeah. off the rails. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. The Boulder, Colorado Police Department has issued an executive summary after internal affairs investigation number one. <laughs> the first one of the year. <laughs> It does. It says IA 2019-001. Well, are we encouraged or discouraged that it took till May to come up with a internal affairs? Did they re Are we saying they're so clean there were no issues between January and April? <laughs> no are issues. We, are we saying no, that no, 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 one... no issues that got reported? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> They'll never find those reports at the mm. bottom of the Salt Lake. No, that's that's Utah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know Colorado. I'm licensed in Colorado uh, federally, or uh, admitted. Should apparently, I say? Apparently, shrooms are now decriminalized in Denver. So right. we got that well, going let's for get, us. Let's, let's get a plane hey. ticket. Why yeah. does Kelly have to live in Scotland? All right. So we're going to be talking about two rules of professional standards for po the police department. Department Rule Five: Members are entrusted to effectively, helpfully, non-abusively use the authority and, and public trust vested in them. Uh, police action should know a reasonably whatever accordance with the law act and etc and yada yada we'll skip over that rule eight members use reasonable judgment and refrain from conduct which reflects unfavorably on the department shouldn't cause embarrassment reflect discredit upon individuals uh, or tend to impair or e operation effectiveness credibility of the department or its members so that's what we're talking about today. And if that was the end of the story, that would be a very boring story. That's not. That's the beginning. That's the setup. On March 1st, 2019, a Boulder police officer, the subject officer, indicated that he drove to the area of Folsom Street and Arapaho Avenue specifically to conduct extra patrol. The subject officer was providing extra patrol due to his recent response to a few crimes in the area that included an attempted bike theft, a burglary, and trespass at an orthodontics office. <coughs> now, quick question, since we're lacking an Oxford comma, it was a few crimes, which would make me think three crimes. However, it says attempted bike theft, one crime, and then without a comma, burglary and trespass at an orthodontics office. That's one thing, two total, right? So if we put the Oxford comma in, then it's bike theft, a burglary, and a third thing, a trespass, right? So, okay, I'm, I'm being... I believe in the Oxford comma. I do believe in the Oxford comma. I, 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 think, it's, I think it's actually a matter of ethical responsibility for us to use the Oxford comma. Approximately 8.20 a.m., the subject officer was driving northbound on Folsom Street, approaching Grove Street when he observed a man, later identified as Zade Atkinson. From a distance at 2333 Arapahoe Avenue, the officer stated that he saw Mr. Atkinson manipulating an unknown object with his left hand as he held it close to his mouth. Note, during the internal affairs investigation, a review of video from a building-mounted camera indicates that Mr. Atkinson was eating food and using his mobile phone. The subject officer decided to drive closer to Mr. Atkinson to see what he was doing. The subject officer turned his vehicle around and pulled into a driveway east of 2380 Grove Street to observe. Mr. Atkinson was seated on a bench in the patio area and was wearing a backpack. This, he, he drove into a driveway. Isn't that just a trespass right there? <laughs> yeah, right? The subject officer, not, well, not if there wasn't a notice of no trespass. Mm. The subject officer observed him for approximately one minute from his patrol car and then decided to approach Mr. Atkinson on foot. While the subject officer was walking, he noticed a red and white sign posted next to an entry door on the north side that said private property. During his interview, the subject officer stated that at this point he was unaware of Mr. Atkinson's race because he had only seen him from a distance and approached him from behind. 
The subject officer also stated that he could see that Mr. Atkinson was holding a long metal object in his left hand and appeared to be using it to make contact with the stone benches surrounding the patio. As the subject officer got closer, he could see that Mr. Atkinson was picking items off the ground with the long metal object and placing them into a white bucket that he was holding. Mr. Atkinson was picking up trash. Nefarious. The subject officer then activated his body camera and decided to self-initiate contact with Mr. Atkinson to determine what he was doing and if he lived or worked there. The subject officer notified dispatch, initiated what he described as consensual contact. The subject officer asked Mr. Atkinson if he lived there. Mr. Atkinson told the officer that he lived there. The subject officer then asked Mr. Atkinson for his address. Mr. Atkinson turned around, looked up, and pointed at the address numbers on the front of the building and said, 2333 Arapaho. I love this guy. The subject officer then asked Mr. Atkinson what unit he was in. Mr. Atkinson replied, I don't think I actually have to tell you that. Now you see our problem, right? The Because he didn't comply. Well, no, no, he had the right not to be disturbed or bothered by an officer that didn't have reasonable suspicion. The subject officer replied that he just wanted to make sure Mr. Atkinson had the right to be there. Mr. Atkinson replied that he already told him he lived there and that he also worked there. The subject officer stated that he needed to verify that he did, in fact, live there. The subject officer asked to see Mr. Atkinson's ID. Mr. Atkinson produced a Naropa student ID, which did not contain his address or date of birth. The subject officer asked for his date of birth. Mr. Atkinson did not answer and began walking away, picking up trash. The subject officer called for a routine cover car. The subject officer told Mr. Atkinson that he was obstructing a police officer and that it was an arrestable offense. The subject officer told Mr. Atkinson that he was detaining him and investigating him for trespass. Okay, this is where we've gone off the rails at this point, just in case you Yeah, so you, all, you need to have reasonable articulable yeah. suspicion before this point, not, not like we're going to find the reasonable articulable suspicion later. Uh, That's not how it works. Up to the last two sentences, we were doing fine. <laughs> up to the last two sentences, we were doing fine. The, the police <laughs> wanted to go and ask him some questions, ask his name, where do you live. This is fine. Then we said, this is obstruction and I'm detaining you. This is where we went yeah. off the rails. The subject officer updated dispatch that Mr. Atkinson was failing to comply and had a blunt metal object referring to the trash grabber in his hands. You know, I, I, I assumed that it was a pointy stick, but we don't even know that it was a pointy stick. It might have been a grabber stick that has like the little suction cup things on the end. It might have been a grabber like that. So it might not have even been a weapon. Like, I mean, you could Everything's a weapon if you believe in yourself. True. Dispatch sent two officers, and they responded in an emergency response. A sergeant acknowledged the emergency response and started toward the call as well. Some of the responding officers, including the sergeant, were delayed because the subject officer reported the address as 2333 Folsom, which dispatch transmitted. They responded to 2333 Folsom, which we know how that goes sometimes, right? Which is 0.8 miles from Arapaho Avenue. As Mr. Atkinson walked away, the subject officer followed him from a distance. During this period, the subject officer repeatedly asked Mr. Atkinson to stop and advised him that he was obstructing a police officer. Mr. Atkinson raised his voice and yelled. The subject officer reported that he felt threatened by the trash grabber and drew his taser and transitioned to his handgun. Both weapons were pointed in a downward direction in front of the officer. Uh, at the same time? Like, like, like both pointed at the same time? That's, yeah, that's what I want to know. <laughs> Neither weapon was ever pointed at Mr. Oh, Atkinson. That made him feel well better, I'm The sure. subject officer said that he did not believe the taser would be effective because Mr. Atkinson was wearing a heavy coat. He drew his handgun after Mr. Atkinson stopped behind the building out of sight. S-I-T-E? S-I-G-H-T? Hello? During this period, the officer was alone with Mr. Atkinson. All of the additional officers responding reported that they believed this to be a serious situation because of what they knew from radio traffic. There was an uncooperative person who was heard with a raised voice, yelling in the background, failing to comply, carrying a weapon, a blunt metal object, eight officers, and one supervisor responded. Nice. One of the officers was from the University of Colorado Police Department. All of the other officers that responded to this call 
believed the trash grabber could be used as a weapon based on its material and length if it was used to strike another person. As cover officers arrived, they took up positions at a safe distance away from away, forming a perimeter around Mr. Atkinson. Another officer arrived with his handgun drawn, but holstered it in approximately 30 seconds. Two officers attempted to de-escalate the situation, thank goodness, by speaking to Mr. Atkinson in a calm manner. One officer had a taser out as he arrived, but he never pointed it at Mr. Atkinson. He halted his taser early on while reasoning with Mr. Atkinson to drop his trash grabber, which he did. No weapons were ever pointed at Mr. Atkinson. They're very adamant about how no weapons were ever pointed at him. This is the fourth time they've said this. You know, this. once again, I have to say <laughs> that if you have your handgun drawn, even if it's in a low ready position... That's enough to put somebody at a reasonable apprehension. It doesn't necessarily yeah, make you feel injury. that much better. Yeah. Even if you're trained not to pull the trigger, like that, that's still, a, I think, a reckless thing to, to, yeah. to even draw the thing. But, um, you know, because you know, I'm just I'm just guessing you if, go spend a day on the streets as a police officer and tell me that you don't want to pull your gun about three quarters of the time. Because let me let me let me ask you, Leonard, how well this would work out for me. Let's suppose the situations were slightly reversed. Let's suppose that, you know, I was the one who initially approached the police officer and asked some questions. And because the police officer was being a little snippy, I pulled my concealed carry handgun and had it in a low ready position. Yes. I'm not pointing at the officer. Yes, there's a huge how, double stand. How well is this going to end for me, Leonard? There's a huge double stand. Is this going to end well? for me or poorly for I me? I think about this often. If a if an if I had an engagement with an officer that was clearly they were doing something unlawful, and because they used a weapon to engage me, if I engaged them with a weapon, I would still be in the wrong. Oh, you're not engaged because it's not pointed at them. Ugh. Right? Yeah. Well, I'll, well, I'll quote the Colorado Boulder Police Department. Yeah, I'm sure that will only work well for your state. The responding sergeant brought a shield and a shotgun loaded with bean bags based on the information that an uncooperative subject was armed with a blunt metal object. I'm going to give him points for coming with something that was a less lethal At least option. it was less lethal. The sergeant did, sh did so consistent with department training and practice to bring resources and tools to the call to provide alternatives to lethal force. The less lethal shotgun was never pointed at Mr. Atkinson and the sergeant tried to keep it out of sight behind his back. <laughs> a shotgun. A shotgun. Let me hide the shotgun behind my back. <laughs> nice. Uh, another officer was able to gain access through the back door of the building that they were standing next to and talk to residents inside. The officer confirmed that Mr. Atkinson lived in the building and passed that information on to the sergeant on scene. Around the same time, information that Mr. Atkinson was a resident was confirmed with a Naropa employee who arrived on scene. The sergeant conferred with the subject officer who initiated the content and instructed him to return Mr. Atkinson's Naropa ID. Mr. Atkinson was not cited for any violation, and officers cleared the scene at 8.52 a.m. The entire contact lasted 22 minutes. 22 minutes is a really long time when there are guns drawn. Yes, it is. A video that was posted to YouTube did not capture the first nine minutes of the contact. A statement made in the video that eight officers pointed guns at Mr. Atkinson is contrary to the information developed uh -huh. during the investigation and depicted on body-worn camera video. The voice captured on the video telling Mr. Atkinson that he was probably racial pro racially profiled came from a Naropa employee, not a police department employee. So the final disposition, the subject officer's contact was permitted. However, his stop and detainment were not. The subject officer's decision to attempt to detain Mr. Atkinson was not supported by reasonable suspicion that Mr. Atkinson was committed, had committed, or was about to commit a crime, and therefore did not have the authority to detain Mr. Atkinson. When Mr. Atkinson walked away, continuing to pick up trash, the subject officer believed he had probable cause to charge Mr. Atkinson for obstruction. The subject officer did not have probable cause to charge him with any crime. The contact evolved into a stop and detainment that caused multiple officers to respond. The subject officer should have ended his contact with Mr. Atkinson as soon as Mr. Atkinson provided his name, address, and a brief explanation of what he was doing. There was no information, and actually, I don't fully agree with that. Maybe he can, he, if he decides to provide his name, address, and explanation, he can do so, but he's under no obligation. For the, the police have to have reasonable suspicion before asking for your name and address, depending upon your state's law. Don't just go out and do that and then, and then say, well, Leonard French told me to. Go look up your state's law with, with regard to your, your right to I, not identify yourself unless you're being 
charged with a crime or someone has at least a reasonable articulable suspicion, then you have to know what a reasonable articulable suspicion is. So don't just go and do these things. Don't just go and, and watch a YouTube video and go and do these things. But for the purposes of this review, this person did not have to identify themselves to police. The subject officer should have ended his contact with Mr. Atkinson as soon as he provided his name address and a brief explanation. There was no information developed in the investigation that responding officers violated department rules, policies, or values. No officer, including the subject officer, used profanity or racial language. During the subject officer's interview, he was specifically questioned if his actions were based on race, and he stated that his actions were not. Mr. Atkinson believes that the subject officer's actions were based on racial profiling. So they found a violation of those two department policies. At the conclusion of the standards review, the subject officer waived the time frame provisions and resigned his position effective May 15th, 2019. So the subject officer voluntarily resigned his position with the Boulder Police Department. So as Blackleaf dies in the background, you can tell us what you thought of that story. So thank you very much for joining us. That is our show. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Kurt Mueller, your favorite patent attorney. We are a community-supported legal education show called Lawful Masses, and we are supported by your monthly pledges on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.org slash u slash lawful masses and twitch.tv slash lawful masses and this YouTube channel, of course. Thank you very much to our May 2019 supporters. At the $50 level, thank you to John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mintain, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Snorri Wizatsky, All Quixotic, and Aspernari. Thank you very much for your support at the $50 level. And all of the $5 plus supporters are on the LED panel above my head here and will be in the description of the videos that drop. So everyone have a great spring week here. We'll answer your questions here before we take the stream out, but I'm going to say thank you for joining us and have a great week. Yes. Bye.